Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. In this episode, I'm going to be covering part five of the Echo Laminated Top guitar build that I've been working on, and what I'll be doing is I'll be using my CNC machine to make this neck up to the point that you see it right here. So let's jump in and get started. I'll start the neck by making the fretboard and the first file that I need to run on my CNC machine is to drill the holes for the marker dots as well as cut the slot for the nut later on. And since the marker dots have to be flush with the radius surface of the fretboard, I'm going to go ahead and make those before I do any more cutting operations. And to do this, what I'm going to do is cut some lengths of plastic tubing, and this will serve as the outer uh, portion of the marker dot. Then I'll tap those short lengths of plastic tubing into the holes that I drilled earlier with my CNC machine. Once the plastic tubes have been installed, I'll sand them down flush with the surface to make the next step a little bit easier. And that next step involves filling the center of the tube with blue uh, strontium illuminate glow-in-the-dark powder. I'll brush off the excess and then I want to make sure that the holes are completely filled so that there's no voids. To keep the glow-in-the-dark powder as well as the plastic tubing in place, I'll put a drop of water-thin CA glue on top of each one and let that soak in and dry. I've had several viewers ask me if I have a Patreon account where they can send money to show support for my YouTube channel. I don't. However, what I do have is a website where you can purchase plans for electric guitars as well as many of the tools that I use to make guitars. It's called eGuitarPlans.com and I'll put a link down in the description below. Think of it as a way to show me support while getting something in return. Now let's get back to the video. Next on the agenda is to cut the fret slots and I'm going to be using a 0.024 inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit to cut the slots and to do 24 slots will take my CNC machine about 42 minutes to cut which isn't too bad when you consider how long it takes to cut slots with a hand fret saw. Now of course if you use a saw blade in a table saw that's specifically designed for cutting fret slots, it can go much faster. However, the way I cut my slots, they stop short of the edge of the fretboard, creating what's known as a blind fret slot, meaning you won't see the slot at the side of the fretboard and there's no chance for fret sprout later on where the tang could stick out the sides of the fretboard after the fretboard has uh, perhaps shrunk as a result of a change in humidity. Now the final operation for making the fretboard is to cut the radius as well as the perimeter shape of the fretboard and what I'm doing here is I'm 
uh, performing the rough cutting operation, which will hog away most of the excess wood uh, to achieve a coarse radius. Then the machine will do a much finer finish cut, which smooths out that surface and will produce a very accurate 12 inch radius. Part of the CNC process is the inclusion of tabs which hold the part you're carving into the blank so that when the bit cuts all the way through the blank that part doesn't go flying around and get damaged. So once I finished carving it I'll cut the, the part from the blank and then I'll sand off the remaining uh, bits of the tabs. Now at this point the fretboard is essentially done. All I really need to do is some finished sanding and then press in the frets and of course I'll glue it to the neck which I'm about to start making. To make the neck shaft the first thing I have to do is make sure that my blank is perfectly square with the y-axis. So I'll use a pointer bit and jog it back and forth and make any adjustments necessary to ensure that that center line is perfectly square and parallel to the y-axis. The pointer bit is then placed directly over the exact center of the blank and then I'll raise it up and swap it out for the eighth inch bit that I'm going to be using to carve the next operation. After swapping the bit I'll lower it down until the tip just touches the surface of the wood. Then I'm ready to start the next carving operation which will be the truss rod slot. After cutting the slot the router automatically returns to the home position at the exact center of the blank. And from there, I can raise the router up and switch to the next bit that I'm going to use, which will be a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral down cut bit. And I'll use that to carve the front of the headstock. Most of the carving operations I do on a guitar involve two different cutting strategies, a rough cut and then a finish cut. And here you see the finish cut as it smooths out the front surface of the headstock. With the truss rod slot and the face of the headstock finished, I can then remove the blank and prepare it for the next carving operation. But first I have to cut off some excess portion of the back of the blank and that will help reduce the amount of time it takes for my CNC machine to cut that back contour. And once I remove that piece, I'll then remark my center line as well as the exact center point of the blank and I'll use those to help line up the neck blank with the y-axis as well as to find the exact center of the blank and then I'll uh, chuck in the bit that I'm going to use bring that forward to the headstock area and lower it down to find the exact z-axis height. From there I can start cutting the back of the headstocks uh, surface angle as well as its perimeter shape and again I'm using a two uh, carving strategy here. The first carve is a rough cut which leaves that stair step look and then the second carve is a finishing cut which smooths out that surface. Now the next operation which is completely separate from the back of the headstock is to carve the next back contour and that also includes the shape of the heel and as you can see here I'm performing a rough cut again and you can tell because of the stair step effect of that carve. And then the final operation for carving the neck is to perform the finishing pass which will clean up that neck leave it nice and smooth ready for 220 grit sanding. And of course, just as I did with the fretboard, I have to cut the tabs that hold the neck into the blank. And then I'll grab my quarter sheet sander and with some uh, 60 grit sandpaper and I'll sand off those tabs. Then it's off to the drill press to drill out 3 8 inch diameter holes with a brad point drill bit for the tuners. Since I'm pretty happy with how the fretboard and the neck turned out, I'm going to go ahead and bring the two together. And first I'll install the truss rod. Then I'm going to mask off the truss rod with a length of 3 quarter inch wide masking tape. And that's just to keep glue from getting into that slot. 
as I'm gluing the fretboard down. Uh, it's not a huge deal here because the truss rod is wrapped in plastic so it is protected. But then I'm going to use tight bond original wood glue which I will carefully spread out over the surface to make sure that I have a consistent amount of glue all the way around that uh, area where the fretboard will be joined. Then I'll remove the masking tape since it isn't needed anymore. And I'll do the old woodworker's trick where I'll grab a pinch of salt and drop a few grains in several spots along the surface where the fretboard is going to be joined. And then I will place the fretboard into position and I'm going to use my adjustable clamps to temporarily clamp down the fretboard into position and this is just to get the glue to uh, initially set up and that takes about oh anywhere from three to five minutes and once that's done I can then go back in and remove those three clamps and then place my clamping call onto the surface and then really start ratcheting down a whole mess of clamps to get that fretboard bonded consistently with no gaps. And then after 24 hours, I can remove those clamps and I'm ready to continue on with the uh, process of beginning to finish the neck. And that means I have to get rid of all the glue squeeze out, which I'll do with one of my Japanese Iwasaka files. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. And what I plan to do in the next episode is I'm going to finish this neck. And that includes the last little bit of sanding I need to do. I'll apply a hand rubbed oil finish and then I'll press in some frets. So stay tuned and take care and we will see you in the next episode.